Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. In today's video, I'm doing some creating for paint couture. We're going to be making a shabby chic Valentine's Day ornament. For our craft today, I'm going to be using this plastic heart-shaped ornament. I'm going to take the hanging attachment out and then I'm just going to put the end of a paintbrush through the hole in the top to help me hold it. I'm then going to use Paint Couture's 2-in-1 Primer in white. And then I'm going to be using my Eco Brush. This is the 10-inch size. These were sent to me and I was so excited to try them. So it comes with a little attachment on the top that screws in and a little rubber attachment on the bottom that you can take off. And what that means is, is that in between coats, you can actually make sure that your paintbrush doesn't dry out. So to prime my surface, I am applying my primer in a dabbing and stippling motion. This is going to reduce the appearance of brush strokes. Just a reminder that you can find a full product list in the description below. And I'll also have my affiliate link listed there as well in case I inspire you to try any of these wonderful products. Now, ordinarily, I would wrap my brush up in cling wrap or put it in a Ziploc bag to keep it moist in between coats. But instead, I'm going to add this airtight attachment on top of my brush and it will keep it nice and moist until I'm ready to use it again. After my two coats of primer are dry, I'm going to take Paint Couture's Farmhouse Linen Paint. Now I'm using the Eco Brush 12 inch and I'm going to apply two coats of this lovely white chalk paint, obviously allowing it to dry in between coats. I am then going to be taking out this lovely AB Studios Gilded Rice Paper and I'm going to pick the top left hand design for my heart. I felt like the shape was perfect for this particular ornament, so I'm just going Going to carefully rip the design out. I like to do a jagged edge. It's just a more natural look and it definitely makes it a bit more seamless when you are applying it to your surface. You can blend it a bit easier rather than just a straight line. So I'm just continuing to tear that excess paper off until I'm happy with the shape. Because my surface is a little bit rounded, I'm then going to do a few more little tears into my design to make it a little bit easier to get a flat, smoother finish. I'm then using Paint Couture's Decoupage Medium in Matte. I'm going to lay down an even coat on the areas where my decoupage paper is going to go. And then I'm going to press my design down on top and start smoothing it down. I have a little bit of product left over on my brush, so I'm going going to use that to start smoothing that rice paper down and you can see that the little rips that we made before are making it a bit easier to get that design decoupage down. Now this rice paper is a little bit textured so it's never going to be a perfectly smoothed finish but we're not going for perfect here we're going for a vintage shabby chic look here so it really will all come together nicely. Next, I'm going to dust my IOD molds with cornstarch. This is the Dainty Flourishes design. I'm then using some dust air dry clay. I'm rolling it into a sausage sort of a shape and I'm going to start working that clay into my mold. I'm then going to use my thumbs to push out the excess until I have a nice clean edge. Then I'm going to flex that mold and carefully start to pull it out. I'll be repeating the same process for the other design. I'm then going to take my wood glue and apply a generous amount on the back and then I'm going to start to position it on my heart ornament. So I want it to sort of curve around almost in a heart shape and I'm just pressing down carefully so that I don't damage any of those details. And at the point at the bottom, I took my palette knife and just cut off the excess so that it was a little bit tidier. I'm then using a wet wipe to wipe off any excess glue. I'm then taking the other section that we cast, adding some wood glue to that and then I'm repeating the same process as on the other side and sort of trying to mirror that design just pulling that casting around the edge of the heart there and just like before I'm going to take my palette knife and trim off the excess. I'll be allowing my castings to dry overnight. 
Next, I'm using Paint Couture's embossing medium and a JRV stencil. I'm positioning it over the other side of our heart and then using a palette knife, I'm working that embossing medium over the top of the stencil design. You can see I am carefully holding that stencil in place. Now this is a curved surface, so we're not going to get a perfect embossed design here, but you will still definitely get some lovely details. So I'm not going for perfect here. I just really wanted this little detail on the other side and I felt like it looked a little bit like a bouquet of flowers which is perfect for Valentine's Day. So I'm continuing to work that medium into the stencil and then when I'm done I will carefully pull that stencil straight up. This is the next day and you can see how our project is going. The embossing medium has puffed up a little bit. I'm going to take Paint Couture's Extreme Guard in satin and I'm going to seal my entire piece. I want everything sealed in so that when I come in and start layering colors, I have the freedom to wipe back any errors. When that's dry, I'm using Paint Couture's Ballet Slipper Luxe Metallic Paint, and I am going to go around and apply it to the lovely castings that we put around the edge and the side of the heart where we added the embossing medium. So to start off with, this metallic does look a little bit transparent, but by the second coat, you'll definitely start to get a more opaque finish. So remember, we did put down that top coat. So if I happen to go over the top of any areas on the other side that I don't want it to be on, I can take a wet wipe and I can wipe back that mistake. That's why I definitely recommend that you do seal in between coats if you're worried about going in areas where you don't want that product. So you can see here on the second coat, it's all starting to fill in really nicely. And obviously as the metallic Alex dry, they do become a lot shinier and vibrant. When my paint is dry, I'm going to take that farmhouse linen chalk paint again. I am going to wipe off the excess on a paper towel, and now I'm going to do some dry brushing over the top of those embossed details. And this is really going to bring out all of that beautiful rose design. And I'm also going to allow that dry brushing to go onto the other areas, and it's catching some of that texture and really giving this a lovely vintage sort of shabby feel. I'm going to change directions as I'm doing the dry brushing so that I'm hitting different elements. I'm also going to do that dry brushing over the top of the castings that we added around the edge. When that's dry, I'm going to take Paint Couture's Crackle Step 1 and I'm going to apply it to the side that has the rice paper design. I'm applying it in a dabbing and sort of stippling motion as I find this gives a more authentic looking crackle as opposed to sort of an alligator effect. So I'm just dabbing that on and working my way around that side of the heart. I'm not going to be putting it on the other side. I feel like that would just be a bit too overwhelming. When Step 1 is dry, it will feel sticky to the touch and we can move on to step two. As I'm applying at step two, I'm being careful not to overwork the step one, not to disturb it too much, but I'm going in with the same dabbing and stippling motion in all of the areas that I added at step one. Once I'm finished applying crackle step two, I'm going to allow this to dry for several hours. Next, I'm going to take Paint Couture's Van Dyke Brown Glaze and I'm going to start applying it to the area that we added the crackle first. You can see I'm really working it into the crevices that are around the castings that we added. I really want the outside to be a bit darker than the center because remember, this paper is gilded. I don't want to obscure that beautiful gold shine too much in the center. So I'm now taking a wet wipe and I'm going to start wiping back the excess and you can see that beautiful crackle starting to shine through. It still felt a little bit dark in the center for me, so I took my water mister and I added a little bit of water to the center and just wiped back 
a little bit more of that glaze. So I definitely just had to have a bit of a play until I was happy with how it looked. I'm then going to turn my attention to the castings that we added around the outside. I'm working that glaze into the details. It's really bringing out all of those beautiful crevices and I'm then wiping back the excess. I'm then going to repeat the same process on the other side as well. I also then added a small amount of the glaze to the side that we added the embossing detail to and you can see I'm wiping that back and again this glaze is really bringing out the details of those beautiful florals. I don't want it to be as dark on this side. When that's dry, I'm taking Paint Couture's Rose Gold Luxe Metallic. I'm putting a little bit on my finger and I'm going to go around the mold details on the edge and I'm just hitting some of those high points. I like to introduce a few tones when I'm doing my crafting. It just adds that depth and dimension and I'm just going to work my way around. So I love how that's pairing with the ballet slipper that we added earlier and of course that lovely Van Dyke Brown Glaze. So I'm just going to keep going around and adding it to those mold details and then I'm also going to add a hint of it on the rose embossed details that we added on the other side. When that's dry, I'm going to take Paint Couture's Bronze Luxe Metallic and I'm going to put a little bit on my finger just like before and I'm going to go over the top of some of the areas that we just hit with the rose gold. You'll still be able to see some of the rose gold but it will mix in with that bronze and give it a little bit of shine. And I also like how adding this also helps to bring out the gold details in that rice paper. I then also added some hints of bronze to the embossed design on the back. Next, I'm taking that same bronze metallic and I'm painting over the top of the hanging attachment. When the paint is dry, I'll add it back to my heart ornament. Next, I'm going to take some ribbon. I have three different colors here, a light pink, a gold, and a dark pink, and I'm going to thread those through the hanging attachment together. And then once I have that in place, I'm going to take the light pink first and tie a simple bow with that design. I'm then going to take the gold ribbon and I'm going to tie a simple bow with that as well. And then once I finish doing that bow, I'm going to tie another bow with the darker pink design. So we're going to end up with three different bows. Because these are quite transparent, I felt like this was quite a nice touch. It didn't feel super overwhelming doing it this way, but it gave the ribbon a bit more body and interest. I'm then going to take some more of the gold ribbon and I'm going to pull it through the hanging attachment. And this is going to be the ribbon that is used to hang it if I decide to hang it from somewhere. Somewhere. So I've threaded that through and then I'm going to tie a simple knot at the top. To further secure the ribbon in place where I want it to go, I'm going to take some hot glue. I'm just going to put a little bead of that hot glue and then I'm going to press that ribbon down on top of it so that it stays in place the way that I want it to look. And here's our finished Shabby Chic Valentine's Ornament. I had so much fun using Paint Couture products to create this lovely Valentine's Day ornament. Let me know what you think of today's project in the comments. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure you hit that like button, comment, and also remember to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any videos from the Paint Couture creative team. Thanks for watching.